Hi guys, it's Alice and today I just felt like making a very casual, cozy, I guess reading vlog. I'm gonna do some reading today but I'm also gonna bake something which I'm very excited about and I just thought it could be fun to sort of take you along with me, I guess. Now we've finally made it to September which in my book means that it's fall, like I'm in complete fall mode right now. Even though like the leaves haven't started changing or anything, I'm just like, I'm so excited for it. It's cooling off a little bit here too, which I just, I just love this time of year. I usually feel like when the seasons change, I always get like a renewed sense of like, I get really inspired and I don't know, I get really excited about it. And I feel really lucky that I live in a place that has like all four full seasons. Even though I don't love summer, I think it's nice to just have all of them. I remember when I went to photography school, we had a teacher who kept like telling us how lucky we were to live in a place that had all like four seasons and how amazing that is. And since he really like drilled that into us, I feel like I appreciate it so much more for some reason. Like that really, I don't know, really made an impact on me. I guess. This is already like starting off so rambly, so <laughs> sorry about that. I think it's because I haven't eaten anything today and I'm really hungry, so I need to eat some breakfast. I got this bread today that I'm very excited about. It's like a sourdough bread and it looks amazing. I know it's weird to maybe be so excited about bread, but here we are. And I guess, I guess I'll just show it to you. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but I just think this bread looks so incredibly good. It even has like a pattern on it, so bonus points for creativity to the baker, I guess. I just, I'm so excited to eat this bread. I love sourdough bread, especially when it's like relatively fresh. So I'm gonna eat a little bit of this or like a lot of it. Now, very often when I'm eating like really, really good bread, especially sourdough bread, I will only like toast it very slightly and then eat it with butter and that's kind of it because I just I don't know I really like bread this is turning into like a huge bread segment so I'm sorry about that but I'm gonna eat some slices with only like butter <laughs> but I also got this thing <laughs> which if you're Norwegian you will know what this is. So this is for children, I think. <laughs> I used to eat this when I was a kid. It's a very like sweet and caramelly like bread spread, I guess. And I just saw it at the store the other day and I was like, hmm, I just feel like having some of that. So I bought it. It's like I said, it's for kids. It's basically just straight up sugar. It's very, very sweet. But I just felt like it. So I'm gonna eat a little bit of this because I am 12. Alright, so having eaten, I feel a little bit better. And that bread was really, really good. And <laughs> the spread that I put on it, honestly, it was really good. It's like straight up sugar, but it was really good. Like I said, I do have plans to bake something today and we're gonna do that soon because the dough needs time to like rise and everything. But I thought first we could just relax a little bit and have a little bit of a chat. I got a comment the other day saying that it would be nice to have like an update on what's going on in Norway these days and how things are going. So I figured we could just chat a little bit about that. While I'm talking about that, I'm also going to continue this crochet project that I'm working on. I don't know how well you can see this, but it's basically just, it's a blanket and I'm making this for one of my friends. I really like crocheting things like this because it's very, very easy and I can do like other things at the same time, like watch TV series or a movie or talk, but I've been working on this for months and months and I need to get it finished. So. We're just gonna multitask a little bit. So I remember that I mentioned in a vlog, I talked a little bit about the coronavirus and everything when it first broke out here and things went pretty well. Like we had a period of like shutdown 
and it seemed like that really worked and no one was allowed to travel in or out of the country really and a lot of people were put in quarantine i was also put in quarantine because i got sick i don't think i had the coronavirus but i just had like the flu and i stayed at home for two weeks just in case i felt like we got things under control pretty quickly and we've started like really opening back up and like during the summer it was pretty all right and there wasn't a lot of cases not a lot of people were in the hospital but then the government opened our borders to certain countries so the people could travel and after a summer of doing that a lot of people brought the virus back so now things are a little bit like eh, again as far as i can tell it's not as bad as it was but maybe we're just better prepared now but there are less people in the hospital at least which is good and yeah it's it's been an interesting like month because a lot of people have started school in august and usually like universities and stuff they will have like a week where they do a lot of social events and obviously people hang out a lot and a lot of that has been cancelled a lot of like clubs and stuff have shut down or they have to shut down pretty early in the evening and yeah that i don't know how well that really worked a lot of people felt like that really sucked and i understand that because it can be difficult to like get to know people when you're starting a new school and stuff and yeah i don't know i think the result was that a lot of people just decided to have parties at home instead and i don't know how clever that is i gotta say i am a little bit like surprised by how desperate people are to party <laughs> like i i don't like going to parties i i like hanging out with my friends obviously but i'm not a huge partier i never like go out on the town because i'm just not into it but people have really been struggling with it which i can understand like if that's what you like to do it sucks not being able to do that but I've noticed that there's been a lot more like home parties just in the area where I live and yeah I imagine that's not great obviously there are people who take precautions they make sure that people try to like stay away from each other but obviously if you're drinking that one meter gets real small when you're drunk so yeah I don't think that's great as far as I can tell there seems to be like a lot of there seems to be a lot of contagion within like younger groups of people now and that worries me a little bit because a lot of younger people like I myself could get it and not know which is the worst. Just to like illustrate the point of how desperate people are to just like yeah have a good time. Someone in Oslo had a party they like arranged a party in a cave the other day i think it's like a week ago and this cave was like shut off it's an old shelter i think it's an old like bomb shelter and someone decided to like break into this place and invite a bunch of people and like have a rave in this cave that rhymes but that's what they did and as you can imagine that's not a great idea. Now, I don't think maybe the people who did this realized what was gonna happen, but I also feel like you should have, maybe. I mean, like, don't break into places and have cave parties, like, honestly. They apparently, like, brought some sort of, like, thing to play music and stuff. I don't know the English word for it, but those things, they make, like, fumes, right? And the ventilation in this cave was not good at all. So a lot of people, luckily no one died, but a lot of people fainted because the oxygen level in this cave got so incredibly low, so they just passed out. I think, I think some of them had like carbon dioxide poisoning, which is really, really bad. And I think the police, it was either the police or the fire department, they like measured how much oxygen was in this cave and it was at like 16% and that's just that is next level I kind of hope that this is something that happened because of COVID I hope that's why I hope that this is like a situational thing and people aren't this 
desperate to party and this stupid just on a regular basis. I really hope so, but I don't really know, but like, what is happening? <laughs> I do think things are like relatively under control though. They haven't like started closing things down again, but they've sort of slowed down the process of really opening things back up. And a lot of countries are like on the red list now where you can't travel. Basically you can't travel anywhere right now. And I feel like that's probably a good thing. I don't really know. We have had like whole schools that have shut down because like a teacher got sick or got diagnosed with the virus and they had to shut the whole school down because people had to go into quarantine. And that's that feels like pretty dramatic, I guess. And to me, it feels like more people are sick, but less people are being hospitalized and less people are dying. So I guess that's a good thing, but it's not a good thing to have this thing floating around. Although, I guess that's just the new normal, like we're gonna have this floating around for a really long time. I have mentioned this before, and this is still a thing, but I think that people are really, really tired of hearing about the coronavirus and like having to take precautions all of the time. Like a couple of weeks ago, the government said that if you go on like a crowded subway or a crowded bus, especially in Oslo, you have to wear a mask and I figured like okay I'll just wear a mask anyway because better safe than sorry but then <laughs> I went on the subway and like no one else was wearing it and that was a little bit that wasn't great I think that the way that the the health organizations sort of spoke about this was maybe not that great because they were like you can wear a mask but you don't have to Masks aren't really that efficient anyway because we don't have that high of a number of cases so it might not even matter and that... I feel like when you phrase it like that most people are gonna be like, eh, whatever. I know that a lot of other places it's mandatory to wear a mask whenever you go outside but here it's not, I guess because... Yeah, I guess masks are only efficient if you have like a certain amount of contagion going around, I don't really know. Obviously like healthcare workers have to wear them, but yeah, we don't really wear them here. I know that a lot of other places, you have to wear them all the time. Anyways, that's kind of the update on that. We're doing all right. We very luckily have a very good healthcare system. So we're like, most of us are fine. So that's great. But yeah, I gotta say, I haven't been like reading a lot of news and stuff lately because I think that you can get a little bit fatigued by just like paying attention to everything all of the time. So I haven't been doing that as much. I'm like constantly in between, like wanting to be completely informed and not having the energy <laughs> to be completely informed. Like I, I worry and reading a lot of news make me more anxious so i try to like maybe check a little bit but not a lot but yeah does that happen to a lot of other people i feel like everyone is sort of like a little bit fatigued by the situation now i talked about this with my grandfather the other day and i didn't phrase it like that i just said like a lot of people seem to be very like tired of this and he went on a complete full rant about the Second World War because he lived through that. And I remember thinking like, I mean, he's right. Like, can you imagine? We've been doing this for like six months and everyone is like so over it. But yeah, that's kind of what I had to say about that, I guess. I think we should try to make this dough now. I'm gonna bake this I have tried to find out what this is called in English and I don't know, but it's like a cinnamon bun, but you make like a big long one instead of like buns. That's what I'm gonna make. I think this is originally like a Danish thing and it's called kamelstong. That's what it's called in Norwegian too. It's like a very popular thing here. It's super delicious. So. Yeah, we should make the dough for that and then that has to rise for a couple of hours and then I should probably get some reading done. I haven't read anything today. So yeah, let's go start that. 
So what I'm gonna make is this thing, except I'm not gonna make it into like a wreath shape, I'm just gonna make it into like a long thing that you cut up. And this is basically a cinnamon bun, but it's, I don't know, looks like this instead of a bun. This is a very easy thing to make, it's basically just a cinnamon bun, except you shape it a little bit differently. And the ingredients is just like flour and butter, sugar, cinnamon, and I guess a little bit of milk or something. I don't really know, but it's very, very simple to make. While I'm making the dough, I'm going to be listening to this podcast called You're Wrong About. I've mentioned this before. It's really, really good. And I'm on like the fifth and final episode of like a five-part series about this book called Michelle Remembers. And this is basically the book that started like the satanic panic in America in the 80s and it's been incredibly interesting. I have like half an hour left of the last episode so I'm excited to see how it all ends. I'd really recommend this though, I feel like it's been a really really good series and I feel like it's kind of perfect to listen to like during fall because there's a lot of like weird stuff going on in it and you don't need to have read the book i haven't read this book and i have no interest in reading the book so listening to it is fine if you haven't read the book all right so the dough is resting and hopefully rising and i am just gonna leave it alone for a couple of hours and then we'll get to the actual like fun bit <laughs> but in the meanwhile i'm going to read a little bit and the book that i'm currently reading is this one this is the satyr moonstone by suyata Masi, and this is the second book in the Perveen mystery series the first book is this one this is the widows of malabar hill and i gotta say i love the covers of these books i think they are so pretty these kinds of covers they just get me every single time like i love the design i love the colors and i like that there's like shiny bits on both of them and i feel like they go really well together they match up perfectly it's very satisfying these books are set in india in the 1920s both of them are set in yeah 1921 and it's like a cozy mystery series but it has i feel like maybe a little bit more to it than your average cozy mystery like there's 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 some depth to it if that makes sense not that cozy mysteries in general don't have depth but some of them like don't they're not like completely just surface level if you know what i mean they do dig a little bit deeper and i really really like that in the first book we are introduced to perveen mystery who is a female lawyer and she's actually at least Bombay's first female lawyer, and she might be the first female lawyer in all of India. I don't really know. But it's set in Bombay, and she works in her father's lawyer's office, and she's sent off on this case. And she gets this case because she is a woman, and it involves like these women who live I don't know if I'm gonna say this right, but I think the word is purda, purda? I don't really know, but it's like women who live in seclusion and they don't really have any contact with any men other than their own family. These women, they need to be like interrogated for something and the only way to really do that is to send in a woman. So they send in this female lawyer. And I really, really liked this. I felt like... It did a lot of really good things. We have like this case, but we also learn about this female lawyer's like backstory and there's some really disturbing, but also really interesting stuff about that. She was married and she's run away from her husband. And like that bit is also like a great part of this book. Now I have started this already. I'm like 25 pages in and in this one, Praveen is sent off into this like, it's kind of hard to explain. I feel like the, what I've read so far, it was a little bit confusing. There were a lot of like names and I, I don't know, it was a little confusing. But she's going up to this royal family 
in Sadapur, which is a part of India where the British don't rule, I think, and they have like a monarchy, and she is going up there to, I don't know, to try to figure out, it's not really clear, but there's some sort of like, I guess they need a lawyer and they're sending her because she's a woman, I don't really know. I am excited to see how this is gonna be. I feel like I'm always a little bit apprehensive about reading like second books in series because sometimes they're just not as good and I feel like in this one we have like two storylines. We have the storyline of this like case and then there's also the storyline of Praveen's background and you can't really carry that on to this, I don't think. So if this is just about the case, I don't know how that's gonna be. I don't know how much sense this is making. If you've read them, you probably understand what I mean, but yeah. One thing that I do really like about this is that it has a map of the princely state of Satipur, and it also has like a family tree, which I feel like is gonna be very helpful. This is like the royal family that she's going to, I think. A thing I noticed just now is that this author has apparently written a lot of books and here it just says Japan books and then there's a bunch of titles and I wonder if these are like fiction books. I could be like interested in reading those maybe. If any of you have read them, let me know. Anyways, I'm gonna read a little bit now and I'll probably update you when I've read a little bit and the dough is ready to continue with. So the dough has risen and it's huge so I'm gonna make the filling for this and then like roll it out and do all of that and show you like what I'm making. <laughs> I also just read in the recipe that it has to like rise for another half hour to an hour after I've like made the thing. And I gotta tell you like dough is very high maintenance. <laughs> So this is what it looks like. I had to split the dough into two because <laughs> there's too much of it. But I made two of these and it's basically just a cinnamon bun, but in this shape, I guess. So now we're gonna let this rest for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then it goes into the oven. So while that's doing its thing, I'm gonna continue reading this. I've only read another two chapters because I got a little bit distracted <laughs> earlier. But Praveen is still on her way to this palace and she's like talking with people along the way to figure out like what the situation is. The palace is like in a really remote area and it's almost impossible to get to in the rainy season. And it seems like the issue is that they use different names, but it's like the, I guess, the equivalent of a king and queen. The king has died and he has a son who is the heir and the son's, the heir's mother and the grandmother are like at odds as to what to do with his education because his mother wants to send him to England and his grandmother wants him to stay at the palace and it seems like there's some, like, they're concerned about his safety for some reason. And on the back here, it does talk a little bit about a royal curse. So maybe 
that's a thing too. I can't really tell if this is gonna be as good as the first one or not yet. I am like in a little bit of a weird reading mood. I'm getting distracted very easily. I don't think that's the book. I think that's just like me. I kind of want to just watch some series, but I also want to read. So the struggle is real. I am like making my way through Criminal Minds these days, which is a show I've seen an episode of here and there. And then I decided maybe I should just try like watching full seasons and see how I like it. Criminal Minds started in 2005 and the earliest season is like, you can tell it's getting a little bit old. I'm only on like season three now and there are 15 in total. So I've got quite a lot to watch, but I'm really enjoying it. And I kind of want to watch that, but I also want to read, but I can't read while I'm watching a TV series, so. I do think I'm going to prioritize reading though, at least until that thing that I'm making is done. And yeah, when it is, I might like eat a few pieces and watch at least one episode of Criminal Minds, but we'll see. a couple of hours now and I have eaten quite a lot of that cinnamon thingy that I made and I have been reading and I've made it to the like 100 page mark. Our main character still hasn't made her way to the palace but she's just sort of been inquiring about what everyone around the palace thinks of this and thinks of this family and she's like getting ready to go up there and get involved. I will say, I do think this is a little bit slow so far, to be honest, but I do love the setting and the time period and I really like revisiting this main character and reading about the culture, like the different cultures of this place and yeah, I really like that even if I feel like the story hasn't quite got going yet, although I'm sure it will soon. There is also a little bit of like not romance, but a little bit of attraction going on, which I hope isn't gonna be like a huge part of the story because I don't love romance, but also like if she wants it, if she gets it, good for her. It'll be interesting though to see how that could evolve given what we learn about Purveen in the first book. I don't wanna talk too much about that, like I really don't wanna spoil it, but It'll be interesting to see if that's gonna be a thing. Now, I think that I'm going to end this vlog here because the sun is setting soon and it's raining a little bit too and it's really nice. And I'm literally just gonna spend the rest of the evening eating leftovers for dinner and then some more of that cinnamon thing. And then I'm gonna watch like Criminal Minds and maybe read a little bit and that's kind of it. By the way, if any of you guys are wondering, yes, I did make way too much of that cinnamon twist thing that I made. I didn't realize that it was gonna be this much, but I've cut it up and put parts of it in my freezer, like what I'm not gonna eat today and tomorrow, because it's really easy to reheat and now I have like a snack in my freezer for a long time, which is great. I say a long while, but what I really mean is that I'm gonna eat it within like the next week, but whatever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I feel like I've had a very cozy and relaxing day and I've just taken it easy and I felt like I needed that today. So yeah, I'd love to know what you guys are currently reading and if you've read this series, I'd love to know your thoughts and how is everything going where you are? How's the situation and how are you doing? I'd love to know and I will see you soon. Bye.